Um, from Enta and Boldry, please introduce your corpse. No, just start from the top of the list then. Yeah, um, James, go ahead. Oh, we're recording. I see. All right, I'm James Argett. I'm founder of FutureCore, which is now pretty much being well known as Libre Social Club. Okay, then I am Gomi from Let Farmers. I'm a senior director. And um, Let Farmers is a corp that's been in W Space since, well, the founding of W Space, really. Been living in C4s, C2s, and now currently lives in a C5. Primarily a PvP corp, but do organized uh, PvE and exploration. And even Norfolk, as a reason. So, yeah. Jack of all trades, to be honest. Yo. Excuse me. Um, I'm sorry. Hey, um, Sylvanium, you got a, a tail guy trying to get on Mumble. He's having trouble. Um, Tarunic, is that him? Yeah. Okay, Bashir, can you drag, please? I don't think he can actually log into Mumble. Oh. Bummer. It does take two hours for the server to update. Is Kaldum online? Probably not, right? He's not. Ah, he can push the server. Oh well. Alright, um, moving on. I believe uh, Corbex is next. Yeah, I'm Corbex. I'm uh, the main diplomat for Aham. Uh, we live in a C6. Uh, Tandoner, uh, how about Red Circle Inc? Um, I'm a member of the Red Circle Inc for about a year now. I partially do T3 production to earn my plex if I can't play for too much time. As well, I enjoy to PvP and Roman Nilsic. And Atomic Connor? I am a recruitment officer for Ad Hoc Incorporated. Uh, we at the Corp started off from the uh, uni's old wormhole campus, and it's great to see the wormhole campus getting revived. And uh, we do mainly PvP, and we PvE pretty much only whenever we need money. All right, um, next question. From Legorath Concertian, sorry if I messed your name, making thing about wormholes per hour. Um, well, it's really on the situation. Uh, ISK per hour is dependent on the amount of sites you can find inside your static or whether you have access to C5 escalations. C5 escalations can equally, if you're fast, so you do them on the fast way, you earn 200 million this hour if you want it, but it's extremely boring if you have to do it a long time after each other. It really does depend on how many people you bring as well and how your corp decides to divide everything between you. Um, it's hard to say what you do in the lower classes, but... It, yeah, it's really hard to put a number to it, but I think we can make approximately three to four hundred million an hour if we just take the standard ten people. Yeah, my wormhole corp, uh, how could we really don't really do it per hour. We do like uh, weekly payouts. We put uh, all the money into a pool, and then we take out money just based on how much we think we've earned. And so that includes like scouting and scanning. Communism. Yeah, I mean socialism. And you probably need to keep in mind that that. While some spectacular numbers are possible for short periods of time, you can't do 400 million isk an hour per person for six hours straight. It's just not practical. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Yeah, there's you only a limited number of sites. That's it. It's Feast Famine Thursdays where you'll just pull in bank, and then you might go two or three days where you're like, oh, I've got no home sites at all. <laughs> time to find some PvP because we ain't making any money today. 
As for the Warhol campus, um, per hour, well, I don't know, per week, if you're really active and you shoot a lot of sleepers, some people pull in five, six hundred million in a week, but it's in a C2, farming a C3. The way I like to put it, people, is you're comfortable. You're not rich. If you want to get rich, get a jump freighter. Buy some industrial art, uh, alt, do market trading. That's how you get rich. But living in a warm space keeps you comfortable, and that's all we really need. Yeah, I mean, th there are some people that, um, we've got one guy in our corp uh, who, who he's an Aussie time zone, so if the sites haven't been run, he'll run them on his own, um, like quad boxing, and he'll make, I don't know, seven, eight hundred million a site, and probably do them in 10, 15 minutes. But, I mean, it's limited on how many sites are left for him to do. I think Virgil, Virgil Collapse is probably an exception to all this because they are literally drowning in ISK ever since they got 50 Atanas. All right. Um, next question. As a new player, how long should I expect to train up till I can join a wormhole, preferably the wormhole campus? Well, for the wormhole campus perspective, the uh, training part is really easy. We only ask you to uh, be uh, to be able to fly a battle cruiser, even that might be waves. Be able to scan your way in, so preferably um, astrometrics three. And yeah, that's about it. Basically, it's harder to get sophomore than it is to get the skills. Um. To add into that, if you go to the work fair forum on the EVE Uni uh, forums, if you look in our old apprenticeship thread, which is 9 or 8, you should see a EVE Mon skill button, which is the skill requirements you need to join our apprenticeship, which is basically a, a pretty bare minimum to do high C5, C6, where most. The number one thing you really have to make sure you train those are scanning skills. Yeah, I mean for for IAM we've got I think it's like twenty million skill points, but it's it's not so much the skill points in total, it's more the skills. Um you've got to have enough skills that you can sort of um do stuff. because um, we can, if they've not got the skills to do anything, there's really no point in being on the wormhole. They they need decent scanning skills, ability to fly T three, um Maybe a lodgy and stuff that all helps. Um, so it's, it's more what you need to be actual sort of productive in the wormhole, not total skill points. Okay, guys. Hello, cheats, I believe. Yeah, sorry, guys. I'm late. I was fighting the mumble. I set up it today, but apparently something went wrong. So sorry, guys, for late. And I am just a Jason from Exile Alliance. Uh, welcome. We uh, basically just asked a few questions. One was uh, talk about your corp. Next, how do you make money? And third, um, which one are we on right now? Oh, what skills do you need? Oh, I uh, can answer all the questions or should I just answer one? Because, you know, I can just barge in and uh, just let me tell. <laughs> uh, just catch up, I guess. Okay, so I'm just gonna uh, introduce which corp I am from. I'm from Deep Space Corp, uh, which is the part of Exile Alliance. We are uh, residing in Class 6 Wormhole, and we are Mercenary Alliance in W Space, which is kind of weird and unusual, but, you know, here we are. Uh, next question, I guess, was how we make money. So, uh, mostly we make money by doing what is called capital escalations. I don't know if anyone already uh, mentioned that. It's basically we put a lot of capitals in a sleeper site and then we use uh, smaller ships to slow down sleepers and we just blast them with like dreadnoughts and carriers and, you know, the big boys, so to say. And what was the third question? Uh, what skills would a new player need before joining your corp? Uh, as far as my corp goes, uh, you probably need to fly a uh, tech-free, uh, which is, you know, any tech-free. Or if you can fly a uh, Guardian, that also works. And obviously, 
you would need to be able to scan stuff, uh, which is usually a scanning frigate, uh, which is like a Tech 2 scanning frigate. So I would say like what tech training for Tech 3, like about two months, training some scan scanning skills in one month, so that's three months, uh, three months training. There we go. I believe somebody else was up next. Um, Gomi? Well, in regards to skill requirements, we require basically that you're able to fly a Tech 2 Cobops and um, fly a T3. So you can either pick it when, uh, when we're running sides to protect the fleet, or you can go out on, uh, on a hunt with us. And that's, um, that's basically it, really. For FC, we um, generally look for at least heavy assault cruiser, uh, an armor tank specifically, and good core skills to go with it, along with T2 medium weapons or T2 drones, if you're a drone user. The reason for that isn't so much so that you're up to par as it is you're not getting left behind because that's not fun. So the objective isn't, you know, we don't want you weighing a snap. We want you to be enjoying yourself at the same level as the rest of us. Drakes are great if you live in C2s okay. or C3s. They're not great when you live in a C5 and every fleet is an armor lodgy fleet. It doesn't work and it's not fun. So you need as many skill points as it takes to make sure that you're having the best time that you have. Uh, I linked something in the thingy for that. I believe everybody had a chance to answer. All right, so next question from Arturus Gallo. Is there room in your corpse for people playing just two to three evenings a week seeking to have fun PvP and funding this PvP? Well, it depends how long your evening is. I mean, unfortunately, worm space means that it can take a pretty decent amount of time to do mundane activities such as buying new ships and getting them into the place. And it may be that you have to wait half an hour for a good connection to come up for there to be something to do with the group. If you like doing PI and you like kind of being a loner or if you enjoy doing solo scouting, that makes it a lot easier. If you really want to get in with leaks, this is exploration between this feast famine and do you have a decent play session that you can go when you are playing? If you're on one night a week for four hours, you'll probably get a lot more done than every night for half an hour. Yeah, I completely agree with uh, uh, James here. Uh, basically, wormhole space requires to have a, a bit longer sessions than any kind of other space. Just because you have to do uh, more varied tasks, as just scanning wormholes, finding entrances for your mates, and you know stuff like that. Uh, also, it's obviously a bit more rewarding if you you know find that good stuff. It, it means in turn you have to have more time. Uh, obviously, if you like live in a lower class wormhole like a C2 or C1, which have exits to the high sex space uh, uh, all the time, almost. Uh, it it means you can probably do it more casually, like with a Drake, you know, just floating around, logging in for like half an hour. But for more serious PvP, where you you know kill capitals and stuff, you would probably want to be online for like two hours, three hours, uh, like you know, at least once a week, I would say. For lead farmers, it's it's basically how you use uh, those evenings. If you're just doing stuff on your own. Um, we're not really interested in having you because we kind of tie being social with the entire corp and doing the acti activities we do with corp security. Because we have had people who are just basically loners will go on on their own and then they don't really develop those ties to the corp that we seek. And it becomes hard to trust these loners. At least uh, that's how we experience it. Yeah, I mean, from, from Ahan's point of view, it's you've got to be on for at least a couple of hours. It's it's more that when you, especially in the C5, C6, you, you can't just run sites on your own. You've got to form a fleet. You've got to get boosts sorted or lots of other little bits before you even start chain collapsing and, or doing sites. It's it's not just a case of jumping a drake and 
warp straight to a combat site. There's sort of like a lot more that goes into it. All right. Um, Max Hering asked a question that I believe was already answered. What kind of skills are you looking for when you recruit for your corpse? Uh, Max, I'll answer this question for everyone. There is on the uni forums a section called Workfare. I believe all of these corps have a uh, ad in there if they're recruiting, and most of those ads should have their skill requirements right there. Moving on, Arklusem Fair Matsu asks, "What is the draw into wormhole space? What makes wormholes better, more interesting than, say, nullsec or lowsec or highsec?" No local. No the unknown. No super cat blobs. Well, I no would say I would say that you know there are many advantages in all kind of spaces. It uh, depends on what kind of player you are. If you like to go like with uh, three hundred your closest mates and shoot at you know other people, probably no sec is better for you. But if you like to be a bit more sneaky, like you, you're in a scout, imagine, in the middle of nowhere, there are no gates, nothing, and you're following this, you know, prey, you're waiting for this tango to start doing sights, and then you call your, you know, couple of mates of, you know, tech freeze, and you just kill him, and, you know, you kind of stalk him, then, you know, probably double spaces for you. Uh, but if you just, you know, like to, for example, be a faggot, and, you know, just kill other people for, you know, just for fun's sake, uh, low sec maybe is for you. So it kind of depends on what kind of a player you are. If you like exploration more, being unexpected and doubly spaced, yes. If you like, you know, just logging in, getting in, out, and you know, doing stuff, then I would probably ag advise against doubly space. For me, it's it's just the sheer pleasure of sitting on grid with a target you've just found and knowing that he has no idea that you're there. But in a moment, your corp, alliance, whatever, will land on grid and just tear him to pieces. It's just the stalking part, the unknown part of W space that's just so appealing, and you don't get that anywhere other place than W space. One of the really big advantages otherwise is that you're always facing new, new enemies, new targets. You know, one time you'll have a null sec into, say, Goon Swarm or Test Space, one time you'll be in the south, sometimes you're fighting another wormhole call. It's just an amazing amount of variation and variety. It's a whole new set of targets every single day. I mean, the other thing is you, you can own your own little bit of space. And I mean, as big as all the wormhole corpses are here, I don't think any of us could like hold Nelsic soft, but we can own our own little wormhole. Um, and that's our space. And I, I think it's very hard for sort of small alliances and corps to to do that apart from in wormhole space. We tried to hold a single nullsec system and it didn't last a day. <laughs> I think we, we could. Um, we had all, all, for six weeks because no one gave a shit. <laughs> well, also, you have to understand that if you guys decide to create your own corporation or the alliance, so to say, and go to nullsec, it just doesn't work like that. You have to ally yourselves in some kind of a coalition so, you know, the big boys don't touch you. In wormhole space, you can just create a corporation or the alliance and hold your own system by yourself. You don't need to rely on, you know, other coalitions or, you know, super capital blobs. You can just, you know, have a piece of your space by yourself, even if you have, you know, just closest 10 friends with you. And in high-level wormhole space, it would not be unusual in a few minutes' notice to have virtually everyone that's online and your entire corp in your home system at a moment's notice to defend your home system against an, you know, a fleet that might be there wanting to fight, which is which true is. of most other places in EVE. Oh, yeah. Everything that people have said so far is true, and I really love the sense of community that I get. I have some of the best friends I've had in my life through worm space. Because when you're living out of the same pauses, sharing ships, sharing income, sharing bookmarks, sharing almost everything, you really connect with those people. Definitely. I mean, I was in NullSec. For, I lived in NullSec for like two months, and I couldn't take it. It was like I was Drake number 276 or whatever for like two months, and that bored me. Then I joined Autocracy, and I got to know every single person in the corp. It was, it was a great change. And like, everyone knows me. I know everyone. It's a great sense of community. And it feels like a big family, really.
We were also talking about W space community. Uh, the W space community itself is, you know, small, so it's kind of a bit more friendly. We don't have, you know, penis jokes and local all the time. Well, maybe we sometimes we do, but uh, it if someone decides like to invade W space from Nullset, usually all the W space entities can get together and you know kick them out. Even at the, even if we at the daily basis we shoot at each other. I seem to recall a, a huge fight being sparked over, well, it wasn't really penis jokes in local in Dumbo Space, but it was something similar. Gulags. <laughs> well, I said, you know, almost never, but, you know, <laughs> exceptions obviously do happen. Also, so am I right? coming okay through the mic? Because, you know, I'm trying to be a bit quiet. Oh, you're coming quite clearly, Chita. Thank you. Okay, cool. Okay. You've got a funny accent, but that's fine. I'm from Eastern Europe, so that's what you get. Yeah, I mean, there are some downsides as well. It's like you can get invaded for sort of fairly minor things, depending on who it is. Um, so you, yeah. you, you need to be a bit careful. Yeah, yeah definitely. It, it doesn't take a lot to just pounce on someone. Um, at some point, we, we found someone we, we thought was role players. It turns out they didn't. They gave us a good fight, and today they're actually a member of uh, Killable Fire. We evicted them from W Space, but we had a good time doing it with them as well, and they didn't hold grudges, so they came to us and wanted to join. It's yeah. um, it's just a big community, and, and no one seems to get pissed at each other. It's, it, it's awesome. There have been a few times that we've ganked people, and then I've gotten mail saying, how the hell did you do that? I want to learn how to do that. Yeah, I mean, I, it's like you said. I remember one time where um, we we were actually going to a Nelsec to fight RC, and we we jumped a load of um, I think it was laughing men on the way, um, killed them, didn't pod them, but killed them, um, and then five minutes later invited them to our fleet to join uh, us when we went to fight IRC, and they actually come straight after we just fought them and joined us like fighting IRC. Well, not so long ago, actually, we had the similar situation where we're. Uh, connected uh, to the No Holds Barred, which is like really big alliance in classic space, and we had a like Mexican standoff of them having like 20 guys and us having 20 guys, and no one just wanting to go into each other's system because we knew that you know each was gonna have a lot of capitals in their home system, and we had like a connection to uh, VFK, which is Goonswarm Capital. So we decided, hey guys, let's you know combine forces and load, go kill some goons. So in the end, goons dropped us like 400 people on us while us having only like 70. But so we had a great fight and we killed uh, a bunch of goons. For yep, similar thing happened with uh, with uh, Ad Hoxie and Trekkie one time. I mean, we ganked like a Trekkie Noctis or something, and then like not two hours later, we got a bunch of guys together from both corps and went on a Nelsec roam and got a good fight. Which, which we won, and it was great. Yeah, I mean, you just you just can't do that in sort of low sec or, or no sec. It's the world of community is fantastic for that. And I mean, we've we've had a few where um, we've had massive frig roams where we've had like hundred man frig roams of like pretty much every wormhole space is invited. Yeah, I mean, in, in wormhole space, you got a lot of uh, like what what uh, what we call FAPs, FAP, uh, which is friendly aggression packs. Like we'll shoot you, but we love you. Well, I, I refer to it as the bro pact, where everyone understands that once you're at a certain level, you don't want to really hit each other in the nads, because that only hurts yourself at the end of the day, because we all know the same pains, we've all dealt with the same crap, and it is much better for us to help each other out so we can fight another, fight again another day. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you don't really want to ev to evict the other big corp. Because those are the guys that bring good fights. Um, I'll just throw in my little two cents. What draws me to wormhole space is simple. No big fleets. I don't know about the rest of you, but big fleets are annoying. There's lots of waiting. There's lots of not doing anything until, oh, oh, there's something going on. It's like, oh, no, they ran away. Probably the biggest uh, W space fleets he will see will like be like 30 people. That's like you know very serious fight against some big dude. 
Yeah, I mean, there are exceptions like that big, like hundred billion isk one a few weeks ago with like Verge collapse and Aharm and all of them. That was like two or three weeks ago. But that's a that's very, a- very rare exception. Yeah, I think yeah. the biggest one I've seen was um, probably when AAA decided they were going to try and take a constellation. And um, a long story short, the Russians, some Russian group got hit. And I think I think it was Excel that went and helped them the first time, wasn't it? Chitzer and killed off a load of caps. And they set up another pause. Yeah, they, uh, we went in to help them and they set up a boss and then we, you know, said, Hey, W Space community, like, NullSec people are invading W Space, let's kick them out. So virtually, like, everyone in W Space just ganged up and we went in a huge <laughs> tech free like, fleet. Like, yeah. like 300 man tech free fleet with, like, about 30 guardians. It was absolutely crazy. When you put worm space into time dilation, something big is happening. <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, Arturus asks, once again, the same question, what is the general recruiting requirements, and would you please explain why you asked for such requirements? I believe it was covered. Basically, they asked for such requirements so you don't get bored when you join them. It's mostly that. Yep. Uh, All right, CG Solate asks, me and a friend of mine are currently planning to do a future two-person wormhole operation. Is this possible? And if so, is there anything we should know to make it work? I'm Keep actually going to bring in Michael on that one. Oh, my. Um, I guess probably the biggest thing that you're going to want to do is don't go into anything probably C3 or bigger. Um, you can do a lot of C2s, maybe solo Drake or something, but a big thing, like, I'm not quite sure, but holding, if you plan on moving into wormhole with the pass, rather than just roaming from wormhole to wormhole with two people, I don't know, but I'd probably just recommend trying to scan down a wormhole from high sec or whatever, normal space, and just kind of going into wormholes daily and doing stuff instead of setting up a permanent sort of operation. I'd like to add a little something to that. Um, I was one of them that helped in Threshold, and there was three of us in there. And I think people tend to uh, uh, underestimate just the amount of daily chores you have, like uh, bringing in post fuel, uh, selling loot. Um, and that takes away from your fun time doing that kind of stuff. And when you only got two or three guys doing it, it it's hard. Well, the uh, if I can intervene, I would say if you have like two guys, what you can do is what we call you know W space day tripping. You basically go to high sec, uh, you scan a couple of wormholes, you enter them, you check the sites, you check the class of the wormhole, and you see if you could you know run those sites, for example. Uh, then you you know gang up, you fetch a couple of drakes, go in. Obviously the. F- uh, probe launchers fit it, do some fights, you know, get out. If you, you know, you're just a couple of guys, it's not probably not worth getting your own POS or your own system, so to say. Maybe you can just, you know, have fun without it. Yeah, I mean, I think the big risk of, like, if there's only a couple of you, um, you've got to be careful that you don't get potted out because you can potentially set up a pause, have a lot of stuff, and if you're both doing sites and get jumped, like, you, you might get potted out and not even be able to get back in, and then you'll lose everything. But yeah, I would say it's entirely doable, and actually, uh, the way I started living in W space, like in C2, C3, I would scan a wormhole in high sec, I would get my, you know, cheap ass fit Drake, I would get in, and I would just solo sites, you know, for like an hour or so, and then just get out. I'll bring lots of VCM. So lots of VCM on your boss, have scan ults, and go crazy. You may screw up, you may lose ships, you might not actually make any ESC off of it, but you'll have fun. And it's going to be way more fun than doing a two-man operation in low sec or null sec, uh, because W space is kind of almost designed around the you know small person, uh, you know the small gangs, so you can you know have your a taste of uh, a bit of everything in, in W space without having, you know, a huge corporation or a huge alliance. Well, 
Actually, the next question kind of talks about the same thing. Uh, how much logistics are needed to actually get things in and out of, for a corp of any si sort of size? So, uh, we, we go through a, a freight load of POS fuel a week. Um, I mean, we rearmed all our POSs, I think, about six months ago, and we were hauling in uh, two freight loads of POS mods a week. I mean, it's for the big corps, it's astronomical the amount of hauling you have to do. Um, really, yeah, you yeah. just you burn a lot of connections. If you get a C140, that thing is going to be probably collapsed within a few hours by transit because that means time to bring in the jump freighter or time to bring in some more caps or something along that nature. If you need a high sec, you're working, you get a high sec. You don't just wait for it. So you end up burning a lot of connections to get what you need. I mean, I would not like to discourage people. I mean, logistics can be a bitch. But uh, if you set it up right and you have like, you know, people who know what they are doing and what needs to be brought in, it, it can be easy. I mean, for me, it is easy because I know, you know, my uh, boss needs this and that fuel and we've got a high sec, I get my orca out, I bring fuel, it's 30 minutes to Jita and, and back and, you know, you're set for another month. Yeah, I mean, it, there's a lot of ways of making it easier. It's like, um, We've got one guy that does a lot of the pos, uh, the hauling for fuel, and I think he brings in one of the compressed ice, and he just refines it in a pos because you get 100% refine um, for ice stuff, and that saves a, a lot of fuel. And it's just, it's just like we'll collapse for a C6, C2 with a high sec, and that once you get to these sort of levels, you've got lots of people to help. So it's not just one person doing it; it's like a big team effort. Uh, exactly. Also, you have to, you know, remember that, for example, if you join already established W Space Corporation, even if it's like 10 or 20 members, uh, you know, those guys will already know what to do and how to do it. And, you know, they're going to, you know, help you to to get you situated. Obviously, if you want to decide to do it uh, by yourself, it is, it's going to be a bit harder. But it's still doable. You know, you get through all those kinks and... You know, you you arrive there where you need to be. It's just about keeping everything organized. And uh, if you're not one of the people doing the actual logistics, make sure you praise them, the ones that do, because it is quite a big job. And they are heroes, all of them. Logistics is also two ways. I mean, you need to haul stuff out just as much as you need to haul stuff in. So, you know, it's not just about bringing in pause fuel either. All right, I think we covered diction fairly well. Moving on. Are you guys having deadly enemies that you want to kick from wormholes forever, or do you basically enjoy having people to shoot? A bit of both, really. I mean, it really depends yeah. on the other people. Like, some people, like, I mean, I, we would never have a Trekkie because they always give us good fights, and same with every other wormhole corp in here, really. But, like, sometimes you find that Corp that does nothing but like pos spins all day until they find you running sites and they gank you, then they keep pos spinning for the rest of the day. Those are the people who aren't uh, any fun to play with. So it's you're doing the wormhole space a favor by getting them out, basically. I mean, that's not with every case, but. I, mean, you, you, I, had, a, I had a blood feud, but we've buried the hatchet. So no, there's no one on a hit list that we want to just kick out. Everyone is on a hit list. We kind of have a hit list right now. Right now. We have a hit list of one right now. They like spun all day. Then when we when a couple guys try to make a high sec run, they camp the wormhole, and we're like, okay, these guys are getting evicted. Yeah, that's pretty douchebaggy. To be honest, if I could, I would probably evict everyone and just sit there alone with my core cool alliance being kings of W space. <laughs> <laughs> well, that it'll have already given awesome fights, but then comes the defense of it. I oh, would actually nice. love that. I should probably move to Null Flag, to be honest. Nah. Well, it, as far as your nemesis is, so to say, go, uh, from time to time you get these guys. I mean, they just, someone insulted you on Eve News 24, uh, wink, wink, go home. Uh, you will be angry at those guys, but uh, in the end, uh, you know, everyone is doing some trolling and, you know, it doesn't really matter. Well, it, it worked, didn't it? You can't log off in sites anymore. Yeah, well, exactly. I completely agree with you. Uh, that article completely worked, and CCP changed the mechanics, so, you know, I praise you. 
Yeah, I mean, I, we in Aham we don't particularly like um, farmers. Which I mean, there's there's a few people that basically just log on, run sites, log off. That's sort of they're not productive. They're not giving anything back to the wormhole community. So we sort of probably go after them quite heavily. Which all they're doing is just devaluing W space loot for the rest of us. Yeah, and I wouldn't say it's just us. I think probably most people here like would do a similar thing. Well, uh, also we have to understand that uh, because the W space community is so different. Like for example, uh, Corbix said the his alliance or corporation has some kind of a you know vision of W space. Uh, some other corporation, like like for example, like Zale Mile Alliance, we are W space mercs, but we might have something a bit different. So. It kind of varies because there are so many tastes of the uh, corporations in, in, in W space. Like we are all different, but in the end, we you know all reside in the same space. All right, moving on. A question from Karimson Safehold: How do people get out the Tech Two salvage and to market from wormholes? Well, I don't know what you're talking about Tech Two salvage. I'll assume you're talking about sleeper salvage, and it's simple. You haul it. It's li literally that simple. Just wait for a good high sig link. Actually, um, some of the sleepers have a very low chance to drop random bits of Tech 2 Delphid, which I think helps with making some of the try marks and some of the ancillary routers, but that's about it. Yeah, most yeah, of the loot. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, uh, most of the loot you will get the in W space from the sleepers is so called blue books. Uh, which is NPC commodity. It means the NPCs in HiSec will buy that stuff. Uh, it's not, you know, player traded thing. So you kind of need to get that HiSec and go to the NPC uh, trading station or whatever they're called and sell that stuff. Uh, the other loot is with the other expensive loot you will get is melted nano ribbons. So you can decide what you want to do with that. You can build tech free ships. Or you can basically hold that stuff out and sell it as well. All right. Uh, next question. Something that I'm sure will spawn a lot of stories. Uh, Nargoth Ho or How asks: Do any of you come in, attack an occupied wormhole, then ask for a ransom for the people to get it back? Of course. You can make some good isk that way. Um, I'm afraid uh, Trekkie does not like boss bashing. We do not like sitting at the boss, even with capital shooting at it, so we don't do it. However, we have found wormholes where bosses were already reinforced, killed the people finishing off the boss, and then holding the people inside system ransom, which is something we gladly do. Oh, that's just nice. It does tend to happen um, for, for Killer with Fire. We don't really like it. It's hard. Not to like it though, because we're kind of buddies with the um, sleeper social clubs, and they tend to drag us along for it. Don't but pretend you don't like it. <laughs> well, sometimes. But yeah, we definitely, definitely do ransom people once we're in there. Um, we had a situation once where we were just looking for something to do, and um, the orc or the um, inhabitants killed one of our interceptors, and we demanded, obviously, that they uh, repaid us the interceptor and the raw cal we saw they had in uh, the system. So we were sitting there ready with uh, a couple of dreads and a tower to put up. We went in there, put it up, and they decided to, to siege the tower immediately without us having actually being in there. We went in there, killed their capital fleet, and five minutes later, the Rawker warps to our tower. They eject it and um, say, here you go. And yeah, that's basically it. We left their system the day after. <laughs> also, the big, big thing with the, uh, any kind of, you know, getting money from the, you know, some random dudes is, you know, their perception of you. Like what I did a week ago or so, I scanned out, like, my static. And I see, oh, there's a pass of, like, five capitals in it. Uh, and, you know, all the tech capitals are not pilot. So what I did, I just, you know, there were like, I think, five guys online with me. Uh, and what I did, I just brought my revelation. I shot at the tower. Some dude logged in and he's saying, like, what are you doing? Why are you shooting, you know, my boss? And I said, you know, you guys 
uh, have to pay us 500 million because you insulted us like half a year ago or something, which was completely untrue. So the guy just paid up. I don't know why he did it, but you know, <laughs> if you go out and do some some stuff, uh, stuff like that, you can sometimes get some decent ass. Yeah, we we had um one corp where uh, we they slighted us in one way, um, and we went after them, and uh, it took a while to get in, but we we got a fleet in, and we we had a couple of fights. One on the wormhole where we we beat a small fleet, and then much later where we killed a much larger fleet, including like a, a forty four billion is Chimera. Um, and then we offered them like twenty billion to leave the system, which they they paid. So I mean, you can get some serious risk. Although it's for the, the amount of time it took to do that operation, like you can make more, more farming sites and the ransom type thing. All right. Next question. This one is specifically for a harm. What's the don't shoot angry blog about? <laughs> is hang on, which is that the old blog where yeah basically we we had um a director who, who got demoted, um, Zaraki and um he he was the one in charge of the blog, so he'd set the blog up. The problem was um he basically uh Post, we've got a fairly strict policy on what you can and can't or shouldn't post on the forums um, and in chat channels. Uh, probably a lot stricter than most, but he um, said a load of fairly inappropriate stuff to uh, um, a sizable community, should we say, in uh, Eve, which people were terribly happy about. So um, he got kicked out of court for that. Um, and then he just basically got fairly bitter, um, changed everything on the blog site, um, then, then posted a lot of stuff on, on like the Evo forums and various bits and bobs because uh, because he got removed from the court from basically uh, sort of saying a lot of inappropriate stuff that the court didn't condone. All right. <clears throat> Next question from South by Harden. Uh, do you have your wormhole space systems locked? Do you run industry or just run sites? Is your space frequently contested? Tarunik actually answered the question for him. I'll read his answer since he cannot be in mumble. Speaking a bit personally, here we actually are kind of the inverse of what you're talking about. We roam out from our home system, opening up chains both in high sec and off our static to W space and do a mix of industry, site running, usually C4, and skirmishing, ganking site runners, hole rollers, miners, gassers, um, pos, poco bash, haulers, as well as baiting and fighting over PvP, other PvP gangs. Sometimes we'll go in and contest space if there's something juicy there. Sounds awfully familiar to what you guys are saying. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, well, um there's always like a an odd industry guy in my alliance in in system which uh, you if you're like industry guy and you want to live in the wormholes that is the entirely the entirely the possibility though the skill requirements to do, on doing the industry stuff are quite steep because if you want to make tech freeze you will need a lot of skills and uh, the only thing you can make with like low skill points is probably gas mining which can and bring a lot of this, and it's you know easy to train for. Yeah, I mean we we've got people that make T freeze in in our home system. We've got people that make caps. We've got people that copy blueprints. Um, we've got a lot of people that do gas reactions to make passive isk. Um, I mean it's we're mainly a PvP corp, but when there's free time, people will do other stuff. They'll haul in bits and pieces they need and then make stuff. When you already have a pause and you have a lot of time, it's hard to not set up some ministry on it. I Anything to keep you busy? It's basically, um, I had the issue that um, a while back ago, Real Life decided to kick me in the ass and say, you can't play E for a week, and as well kick me in my money. So I had to find a way to make Plex without logging on longer than a half an hour a day, which I did. I made 140,000 sub subsystems, crashed the entire market, 
and made like 75% of my original profit, but it was enough money to keep going for another 3 or 4 months. But yeah, it, it's it's not real so hard to start up in T3 production. The only problem is that there has to be either a system inside your own corporation for reacting gas, or you should be allowed to make your own corporation slash boss inside your alliance's system to react gas, because there's a lot of issues with the roles required to do so. Yeah, I mean, if you've got a pos, you might as well take advantage of it. Um, it's probably that's the best way of saying it. What a lot of people do in like W space, like you see a lot of industry guys, for example, in high sec or even null sec, and they specialize exactly in some kind of a field of industry. In W space, uh, usually people are a bit more universal. Uh, one moment you are industry guy uh, reacting the gas, another moment you are uh, sitting in a, I don't know in a tech free and going to shoot some stuff. So. It's a wide variety of uh, activities, uh, what you will be doing or you will want to do in the end. And one industry is one of those things you can do if, you know, it's, you know, no one is online and you can, you know, spin your PI around. Uh, personally, I who is now a dweller of wormhole space also. I uh, don't do any industry because I don't have any industry skills on my main. However, I do do a lot of PI, and guess what? I'm making enough money to pay for plexes for both accounts every month using PI. Yeah, I've got um, five accounts and 12 in, in the wormhole, and I think I make something like about four and a half billion a month uh, in PI. I gave up on PI after an hour. Yeah, I just on three days. It's not too bad, and it's it's passive risk. Like I normally get up in the morning, have a coffee, and just do my PI for like once every three days. Well, yeah, All right. It, we'll have to move this on a little bit. I'm actually running out of space on a chat log to read the questions. Uh, Danielle asks, "Oh, what would you say are the biggest drawbacks of wormhole space?" So play devil's advocate. Oh, oh, could you hold the high sec open for just ten minutes? I'm about to get my hauler in. Ten minutes later. Oh, can you hold it open? Just ten minutes. I'm about to get my combat ship in. Ten minutes later. Oh, can you shut up. No, we're collapsing it. Oh, another MTC-5. Oh, another MTC-5. And oh, another MTC-5. But this one's a black hole. Oh, oh fun. Not another black hole. Sometimes it be like every... Sometimes, some days it seems like every... Wormhole is this MTC five black hole. Some days. Yeah, oh. oh, we've got a chain collapse because we need people want to get paid and we've got a lot of loot to haul out. Chain collapse, everyone, and then you never find a C six C two or C six C three. Yeah, the one thing I personally dislike is that when you finally find something while rolling your static, if they're smart and have probes out. Unless you've got an entire fleet assembled and ready to go, you don't have much chance of catching them if they're smart. Well, I think it's a, you know, a rock, paper, scissors uh, kind of a situation. If they are smart, they will outsmart you, but if you're even more smarter, they, you know, you will outsmart them. Uh, so, you know, it, it kind of depends on what the enemy is thinking and if you know what they're thinking and if they know what you're thinking, you know, it's, you know, kind of infinite thing. All right, next question from Southpaw. What's the turnover rate in your corpse? Um, I might start on Trekkie. Uh, Trekkie is, I think, in my opinion, an exception uh, to most of the Wormal Corps since Wormals require a lot of trust in each other. I mean, I could go out and steal crap ton of ships right now, but people trust me not to do that. In Trekkie, we have the exception of the apprenticeships, where, which causes us to have a pretty high turnover because of the apprenticeships, but we try to limit it a little bit to make sure we still maintain a proper atmosphere as well as a proper uh, um, code of conduct uh, with the people inside track. For us, it tends to be like the general EVE population, where 
if we get you in and we get you situated and you make it through the first about two months or so on a reasonable activity level, we've got you for good. It's very rare that we have someone for longer than that who's actually been involved that decides, you know what, I don't like it, it's not for me anymore. Definitely agreed. Yeah, I kind of agree with James here. Uh, it's, uh, you know, if people like the wormhole space, like in a one month or two months, then they will not leave. But obviously, you know, uh, you can't please all. So, you know, some people are solo players, some people just like blobs and Nullsec, and, you know, you can get those people and they will just burn out. Or, But generally, people stay for quite long of a time. I think if I take all of last year, I can count the people who left us after joining us for more than two months on one hand. It's like, they they really like it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of them things. You either like it or you don't like it. So people will come in, try it, and leave straight away, or, or they'll be there for sort of good. All right, next question from Karimson. What? Does, uh, what did the wormhole community think about Eve Uni going into wormhole space? Oh, it's fantastic. It is excellent. There's a general migration toward a higher level space, and I think that's largely just that there's so much information out there now about worm space that people can skip over lower class often. And so it makes it hard to get people that are really interested in lifestyle and not just making the ESC and running farming fleets. We want people. We want neighbors. Like we said with the downsides, empty system, empty system. No, we want more people there. And so it means getting people in from the bottom and bringing them all the way up through warm space. So more people, the better. Definitely. And a lot of uh, today's wormhole corps, uh, like a few of the big ones, including at Harkersy and uh, I think I'm pretty sure Tresty and maybe even Future Corps, I'm not entirely sure, uh, oh, yeah, have, yeah, all, yeah, have all... Uh, had their roots, they all started in the uni's old wormhole camp. So we're we're really happy about this. I'm, I'm afraid Reki has not started inside the uni itself. However, at the after the creation of Reki, a little bit after that, they started openly recruiting from Eve uni. Ah, my apologies. my apologies. And I know that lead farmers also recruit settlers from uni because they tend to give out good pilots. Yeah, exactly. And um, the good part of getting EU uni pilots is that you can basically mold them into what fits best for your corp. Um, they, aren't, they aren't infected by bad habits that people tend to get from Nullsec. Like, obviously, you can always get something out of people coming in that's more experienced, but we just find that EU uni people just fits better in to our corp quicker because they're still learning everything. Uh, in Excel, we have like I think like four uh, ex EV uni pilots, and so far they've been quite awesome. Uh, I'm really, really excited about this, you know, uh, wormhole camp created by EV uni, and uh, you know, as I really want to get more people personally, and uh, obviously, if you know anything is needed, we will help uh, because we want more people in W space to. Share to interact and uh, unlike uh, non-sec alliances we really care about our community and if anything is going to be needed to help you guys we will be there well at least me yeah i mean i think a lot of people look at wormhole space as like fairly scary there's no local it's like oh what are we going to do and sort of anything that can help train pilots and get people used to that like the like eve uni wormhole thing that's fantastic and the more the better to be honest yeah, I remember I was horrified when I back back in my uni days whenever whenever I went and entered a wormhole. I mean, the first time I saw someone fly by my ship uh, in wormhole space, my heart dropped like into my into my pants. Really, I was like horrified because it was it was just the mystery of the unknown. Like I don't know what's out there. There's no local. I have no clue. And then you start getting used to it, and it's like okay, I think I got this. I think I spent the first two months in W space in cloaky ships because I was so fucking scared of no local. I would not leave my posts without being able to cloak because someone was always watching. That's how I felt, at least. All right, next question from Nargoth. Is there always at least one person online in each of your corps keeping an eye on your wormhole system? 
Um, I'll start with that. As probably the answer is nope. But we will always have like people online doing random stuff. We have a good spread around the time zones. I have to admit, sometimes if it's like a uh, Thursday, that that can be pretty low, like three or four people. But we always have some people online doing something, and there's no need to watch your wormhole. If somebody wants to come into your home wormhole, you're you're not gonna block them or something. One person, so why even watch the wormhole? Just make sure somebody isn't shooting your boss. You're pretty much all right. I'd say the official answer is yes. We are always watching, so don't try anything. The uh, the real answer is usually, but. I'm like hoping that on St. Patrick's Day, everyone is going to be either out drinking or hungover, and so we're probably not going to have anyone watching. Um, we do have pretty decent time zone coverage, but there will be caps every now and then. The good news is that I'm being yelled at by my former Australian that actually we have fantastic time zone coverage, apparently. And St. Patrick's Day is not an American holiday, it's an everyone holiday. So. We have pretty good coverage, and if something does go wrong, luckily, it's pretty easy to get more people online. Lead farmers, we're always watching. Uh, we usually are not watching, uh, but because my guys are just fucking lazy. Online? Did... Yes, not AFA, that's a different story. Yeah, in, in AR, we've probably got 24-hour coverage. I wouldn't say we've got a really strong like time zone coverage all the time, but there's always people online. But in general, we probably, yeah, we'll maybe keep an eye out, but we, we're we not strictly, like, guarding the wormhole 24-7. Yeah, all right. right. Um, next question from Largoth again. If all of your respected alliances met in battle, who would win? <laughs> Everyone. Let follow. Nobody. If you get to be involved in a fight like that, everybody wins. In that, nobody and everybody wins is basically it's all down who shoots who first. It's randomly decided that Frackies are going to go down first. Then we won't do much. It's, it's we're all about the same size. If we really put our crap together and get everyone on there when it needs to be, then. I don't think much will happen. I will think everybody should be around the same size, which is also keeping us stable, really. I thought, what was the question? I kind of missed it. I was grabbing a beer. If uh, were all the, the main corps in here, Roman corps in here, would fight each other at the same time, what would happen? Obviously, yeah. Exa Exhale would win. That's, you know, there's no question. There'd be a lot of dead shiny ships. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's, whose home system is it in? Uh, it's, it's, in it's in Eve Uni's home system. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be really fun fight to be in, though, but yeah. It, 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 yeah, it's yeah. inside their boss realm, in, in it's case like, they haven't just... It's like we all get linked right into Aldra at the like, same time and we all ward like, each other at once. No, no, they're <laughs> worm space system. Oh, they're wormhole space system. Yeah, C2, and they're the only ones with caps. I mean, obviously, we'd all... We'd all cap peloton for that. We'd all team up to kill the caps first of all, and then probably duke it out ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> at least everyone would fire one gun at the cap kills, just a whore on it, but... That's Actually, the, the following question is really a follow-up. Do these things happen regularly? No. 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 Not at all. Maybe once every three years. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. No, it never really happened. There's really been only two serious incidents where that's happened, which was the the original Russian NATO war, which was, I think, about... Banana hammock. hammock. Yeah, there we go. And then there was the recent attempted at eviction of Hard Knocks and the birth of Rage. NATO. Oh. Also, there was Triple A. Oh, yeah, Triple A. That was a huge one. Well, that wasn't really so much a fight. No, that was a statement. I do not think party where everyone's waiting for someone else to shoot first. 
I, I don't think killing a ref with a 150 man fleet whilst it's sieged outside the boss to kill bubbles is really a good fight. <laughs> Which was basically what happened, and then they got the tanny out with all the shiny crap in it. I remember it's not that. about the money, it's about sending a message. Yeah, I suppose it means how big how big a fight. I mean, we've we've had a few sort of 50, 50 man brawls, but they're a couple times a year, if that. It's like it's very rare. All right. Next question in industry one. So our industrialists will be able to answer, I guess. How much do you make from T3 production? How hard was it for you to set up the facilities to operate the production? And how can I convince some guy named Silv that he should let me start producing subsystems? A, do not allow it. B, um, it depends completely on the amount of effort you put into it. I made 140 subsystems. I made those over the spanning time of a month where I would just go around, find the mag site, do the mag site, and use that glue to reverse engineer. That's a really slow way to do it. If I look at um, the statistics of a while back when we had a small industrial team actually doing a lot of industry, they were making, I, I don't know, something like t 10, 12, 13 um, T3 hulls a day, maybe even more, 15, which most of com came completely off uh, tracky lootations from what we found. Go so even faster than that. The only limitation is the amount of characters you have and the amount of time you put into it. And if they produced 15 hulls a day, you can see on the markets, each hull is what, 200 million, a very, very rough estimate. That's quite a reasonable amount of money a day. I built 10 full kits last week. Um, that was a big push for me. I was trying to fill a big order. Uh, T3 production is hard because the market is small, and so it can be extremely volatile. Right now, 76% of the cost of a T3 kit is in melted nav ribbons. Another 11% is in C86. And so and C3 FTM is up to 6%. So 94% of the cost is in those three items. So you can look at those three items and track the actual cost of what it takes to produce. Compare that to the price of T3s. Right now, the market is starting to recover. It took a huge hit after the Tengu nerf, unfortunately. We could not produce Tengus even for cost. It was ridiculous. If you're willing to chase the volatility and stay current with the demand, then it can be great money after you've invested a couple tens of millions of skill points into the skills to build them. Uh, the holes require the relevant subsystem skill to five, or the, the construction skill to five, so that takes freaking ever. And it's really crazy to build holes in worm space because they're huge. They don't have really much better margins than subsystems, and it takes much higher skills. Unfortunately, if you want to build holes, your best bet is just doing it in high sec. Uh, high sec static is pretty much just as good. If you want to run reactions, well, I think you're crazy anyway because they're a pain in the ass. Let someone else do it. So it can do good money, but it's a lot of work. You have to chase the market. You have to pay attention to the meta in a lot of ways. Right now, Lokis are probably a good thing to be building because uh, some null sec alliances are looking to upgrade into alpha Loki fleets. So 100 mega Newton. Heavy missile Tengus went out of favor, Lokis are coming in, who knows what's going to happen to everything else. In general, you're better off doing it as you would any other industry, which is get a high sec pause into it there. But if you're willing to chase in worm space, you can make a disc. Uh, something very important I forgot to add there. The reason why you should not allow anybody inside the EVE Uni Wormal Camp to do reactions inside the EVE Uni Wormal Camp, because in order to do reactions you need to be able to turn off and on silos inside a boss. If you can do that, you can turn off force fields as well. You, depending on your roles, well, depending on your roles, as long as it's set up properly, you can um, just offline stuff, but not actually offline pauses. Like we've got it set yeah. up in Aham where a lot of people have got reactions. Um, they can't an anchor and an anchor offline pauses, but they can um, and, uh, they can offline the actual silos to put more stuff in and take stuff out. Yeah. It's a lot to do with roles. We have, we have chosen a different way. Not allow anybody to allow reactions, but everybody can do everything else they want, except that we set it up slightly differently. 
we just have chosen differently. Unfortunately, the roles and permissions that are associated with POSs are so they, they need to be fixed. That's the long and short of it. They need to be fixed because it is far too much effort to be able to do something as simple as run a reaction. Or use guns, or use everything. Yeah. You have to be careful yeah. with the voter. I completely agree with your NPO system. is a, a bit of a nightmare. It gets time to get used to. I mean, you can still do most of that stuff, but it takes really a lot of learning about the bosses and, you know, experimentation. Uh, but yeah, as soon as uh, CCP fixes bosses, it's going to be way, way easier. Yeah, well, that's a big if, and soon is, well, relative. We're going to make sure that something is done regarding it. It, it won't necessarily be a totally new major overhaul, process, but something needs to be done, and that message is going to be made. Hey, the ta CSM town hall is tomorrow, guys. All right, next question from Crimson. Did any wormhole pilot go to the battle in Losek Asake? Was there no interest or just no connections? Well, no knowledge. I was there. I was there. I jumped into the system and I completely crashed. So here's my story. Yeah, I think we had one guy that I can't remember if he actually flew out or if he was in high sec at the time, but he he tried to get in. I'm pretty sure he just jumped in and then like black screened. Yeah, it was complete failure. We had like 20 man gang uh, flying there, and yeah, we just crashed. I know the Verge of Collapse and Blood Farmers were probably there, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, seeing as Kill with Fire is currently a member of the Honey Badger Coalition, we were there for more or less the first reinforcement wave that came in. In uh, the Red Circle Link we had a few people go along. Um, most of them got killed fairly dramatically just in the lag and stuff. But there were a couple of guys who managed to uh, go in there, actually get involved in the fight, get on a few kill miles and that sort of thing, and live to tell the tale. We actually watched the live streams as we were running sites because it's great fun to watch. And I love reading about it, but I don't want to make 20 jumps to look at a black screen. The lag was horrible. It, it definitely was. It was nice to try out tie dye at max, but. I'm not looking forward to it again. I did, however, manage to loot one of the Nixes that were killed, which was pretty awesome. Hex type shit and, and all of that. So it, it, it's definitely playable to experience that kind of tie dye. It's not pleasant, but I think we owe a lot to CCP Veritas for uh, providing that, to be honest. Tie dye is really awesome thing. You know, what you used to have is, you know, just nodes crashing, and now you can actually play, if you could, could, could call that playing, but, you know, at really slow pace. So, you know, stuff is not crashing, but if if you have, like, 3,000 players in a single system and you want to enter it, it can be a bit tricky. Okay, next question. Is there a problem with a single alliance controlling too many wormholes? Force projection. If you're, you're the, the advantage of the home field advantage is, is that you're going to have capitals and people. The more people you spread around wormholes, less defense you'll have. As such, you just can't, can't uh, spread around too much. And basically, you can put everybody in the same system since you can collapse your static and find a new system once the static's empty. It's not very hard. Well, uh, as the guy said, basically force projection. In NullSec, you have uh, the ability to jump super capitals and uh, capitals great distances with complete ease because you can just, you know, jump those. In normal space, in order to bring capitals into lower classes, you have to actually build them inside. In higher classes like C5 and C6, uh, you can only bring them through low-sec connections or null-sec connections. Uh, 
and you can only bring them like three at a time so it takes a lot of time and the force projection is reduced tremendously it means that it is really hard to bring a huge blob into a single system especially if you are considering to that blob to be capital ships so it's I would say it's very hard for single alliance to control more than I would let's say eight systems, six systems, and there are two thousand five hundred systems in normal space. I mean, there are, there are a few corps or a few alliances that do have multiple wormholes. Um, I think transmission lost and, and Tala can have a, a sort of a few light, like, but it's it's hard to defend all of them. Um, it's and it's certainly not a common thing and there's so many empty wormholes it's it's not really an issue. I feel like it tends to build up bad relations as an effect because if you attack one member corp, the only way that they can help out is to counterattack. And that begins a very nasty process. Once the attack is underway, as long as they don't screw up, they're gonna have full control. No enforcement, reinforcements will be able to get in. It's pretty much a locked issue. And then you really don't want to get into a case of counterattack, 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 because then it would just never end and everyone's spending all their time looking over their shoulder, which well you should do, you shouldn't have to worry about your entire corporation getting evicted as the result of a gank. That's just silly. All right, next question. Um, has a single entity ever held multiple systems as homes for an extended period of time? Has it been tried for some crazy reason? And Terunik from Lost, who unfortunately can't get into Mumble, has basically answered the question, the logistics of splitting corp across systems don't work well. You almost wind up with two wormhole corps and one ticker in that case, more so than anything else. Uh, a wormhole corp ticker, I guess, is doing that right now, but they're split between two wormholes that they, that are already occupied. Our main, 5-5, five five, which got pulled in when VFI uh, joined up with us, and the 2-high-4, so that would be, oh, okay, C5, C5, and C2, high sec C4, clan brought in with them. Well, I would disagree that, you know, holding multiple wormholes like capitals for the alliance is a bad thing. Uh, right now, my alliance, which is Exhale, holds three wormholes, which is a C6, C6, C5, C5, and C2, high sec something. Uh, and, you know, the entire alliance is happy. What we usually do is we go out and kill stuff, and if we have a big operation, what we do, we find the high sec uh, for everyone to enter and then we do that big operation i mean you know it can work it can be a bit you know iffy or difficult but it for us it worked out quite well i know transmission loss and talica and united uh, alliances uh, have multiple worm low class wormholes like c2s uh, some c5s and and whatnot but uh, mostly they are quite huge and they have to, you know, uh, differentiate their, you know, space. Uh, so I think it's doable. It's a bit hard to do. And, you know, if you do it properly, it's 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 completely a valid thing. I think it's more common that you'll find alt wormholes, secondary farming systems that are have a skeleton crew and their only purpose is to grind disk. We ran across some Excel folks the other night, and after uh, two exchanges of PvP, we rolled our static and found Exhale again. But it wasn't Exhale PvP group, it was Exhale the one low key and two caps making ISK Exhale, which we quickly dispatched. So it was Exhale in multiple systems, but it was doing very different things. Yeah, yeah I mean, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's. You can have multiple systems, but to sort of really defend a system well, you need a lot of caps, um, sort of a lot of people in it. So, I mean, um, like the guys just said, most people are, you'll have one major system and then maybe farming systems because it's just, it's very hard to get enough ships to defend multiple systems, like, very well.
Yeah, uh, some alliances like my alliance have we have farming systems, and uh, just because uh, you know people want to make isk, and uh, some people want to make really huge amounts of isk for some reason to buy their you know capitals and stuff. So what we do is you know we say you know if you go want to go out and farm stuff. Uh, you should probably do it out of alliance because we don't condone uh, an alliance farming because that just isn't what we you know do in alliance. All right, sorry about that. I had to step away for a second. Um, not sure exactly who's around, but apparently lead farmers and other lower corps apparently has some relationship with Tess. Does that extend throughout the whole Kill Alliance, or are those corp by corp decisions? I think that's probably corp by corp, I guess. That's all with Kill with Fire. Yeah, um, as I read it, it's Etro Shrine is our other corp in Kill in, um, with Fire. And um, they were actually not the ones who had the relationship with Test. We gained that through E Vegas when. Some of our North American time zone dudes went there and met some of the test command staff, and uh, they um, they kind of started the whole relationship there that eventually led us to uh, to try out being a part of the Hunter Badger Coalition, which we still are today. Wait, so last year's fan fest, you went plus ten with Future Core, then Vegas, you joined HBC. What in the hell are you going to do at Fan Fest this year? Oh, we have a lot of things on our minds, but, well, if you should come, and um, maybe we'll let you guys in on it. We're, we're trying, and I do believe that there's going to be dozens upon dozens of wormhole residents at FanFest this year. Oh, I'm definitely going to be there, so it's going to be interesting. I think we're going to uh, get a fight with, uh, like, in real life with you guys or something. That would be interesting. I know one wormhole corp actually <laughs> booked an entire hotel, uh, like Dark Space Initiative. I think they've actually booked an entire hotel just for their alliance. Yeah, that's quite funny. I think we've booked most of uh, the Metropolitan Hotel as well in uh, Reykjavik. We've got three rooms in a apartment building. Should we all bring Nerf guns? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, next question. From Zardata, why did you mention that C5s are empty? What does it take to live in a C5? People, caps, and balls of steel. Yeah, well said. Uh, I well said. Basically, in C6, uh, there's a small corporation living, which is called Iron Balls. Uh, they have like, I think, 15 or 20 members. So that's what you need. You need Iron Balls. And I would suggest, like, to at least have, like, 15 active people, like, who log in daily, so you can do the sites and you can do some PvP. So, uh, C5 is a bit, you know, uh, a place where you can't really bring your closest friend and, you know, do sites with a drake. You need some capitals, you need some orcas, you need some, you know, barite ships and barite skills. And C5s don't have a high uh, case-based static. Exactly. So, yeah. Scan, scan, scan. All right. Next question. Do wormhole corps have mandatory ops or required CTAs generally? No idea what CTA is. Cult arms. Cult arms. And I think, at least for future core, the only time we would actually call a mandatory operation is if we're getting invaded. Yeah. If anyone drops towers and start sieging us, everyone hits panic button. It's not just a matter of sending out court mails, it's sending out real emails, it's calling people up on the phone, and I'm not exaggerating when I say literally driving to people's houses if that's what it takes. We have addresses of people for mailing stuff around to each other. So that is pretty much the only case where we will call a CTA, and then it is no holding back whatsoever to defend our home space. That goes. The, that's the same for uh, let farmers. But we actually did call the CTA when we were um, training for the Alliance Tournament Ten last year, just because we were not 
having enough people online to actually do proper 10 v 10 testing. I think AHAM would only call a CTA if it was actually us being invaded. I mean, I think most people here, at the end of the day, they they log on because they want to fight and do stuff. So there's no real need for CTAs most of the time. People fight because they want to rather than being forced to. Well, personally, I think a CTA is a stupid thing. Uh, people shouldn't be forced to play a game. <laughs> it's, I mean, if you think about it, how stupid it is that you're forced to log in and participate in something. Uh, you know, it's a game after all. People should enjoy it. Uh, hence my alliance, as you know, everyone probably said here, would call a CTA only enough if our home system is being invaded. Well, that kind of depends on what your goals are for your core, doesn't it? Like, if you're trying, well, kind of having problems getting a example of what, but if you're trying to steer your core board alliance in some direction, you will need people to be there. We wouldn't do it ourselves, call keep the CTAs for just random stuff, but if we were trying to steer our alliance in one direction, I'd definitely consider it. If there's already a consensus about a specific objective you're working toward, by all means. All right, next question will actually be uh, geared towards Chitsa, and I believe one other who may announce himself. From Enta, CSM, now that two is stepping down, you guys working on a single candidate that you'll be that you'll rally behind. Uh, is it you know the whole question? It's a question. What 